Thank Perfect. You. So, hi everyone. Um, I apologize for that. Our internet's been a little bit wonky, so, um, but I'm back now. Uh, I just, I think everybody can hear me clearly. If you can't, let me know. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you have any questions, I think you can pop them into the chat. Um, I have already sent a, um, a quick like cheat sheet with links to all of the information that I'll be sharing. And don't feel shy if you have any questions, I'll share my contact information. So my name is Karen and I have been working here at Brain Tumor Foundation for over three years. I work with um, the pediatric programs predominantly, as well as I run all of the Facebook support groups as a facilitator and I run uh, pediatric webinars as well as um, a few other social media things that I do. But for the most part, I focus on support and services and I run the pediatric programs Canada wide with the exception of Quebec, which is quite funny because I'm in Quebec. Um, so I was, I generally share PowerPoints, but I also really enjoy talking um, and not really having anything to read. Uh, so I'll share everything. And um, I don't know whether I was supposed to, supposed to save your questions to the end, but if you have any questions, let me know and I'll be glad to answer them. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, share. So if I'm going to just start it. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit um, about the organization and how we started, but moving forward, I'm gonna, like I said, focus mostly on pediatric programs, just because I believe that that's really what you're most interested in. So this year we actually celebrated 40 years uh, here at Brain Tumor Foundation. We are a Canada-wide organization with programs in almost all provinces. Um, <clears throat> it is pretty amazing to believe that this started um, 40 years ago in the kitchen of the founder, which I'll tell you a little bit about. Uh, we're a team of about 20 people right now. Here's some of us, um, those who I was able to grab off of Facebook. Um, so our goal basically is to be able to provide resources and support to every single person who has been touched by a brain tumor. So whether that is a patient or whether that's a caregiver, we pr provide resources to all. We also raise funds for grants and research. And the goal is that we work with other organizations as well in order to provide the best services. Um, What's special about our organization is that we actually work with the community who have been diagnosed with malignant brain tumors as well as non-malignant because oftentimes uh, the non-malignant community doesn't seem to get the support they need from the cancer organizations. So how did it start? 40 years ago, um, there was a lovely little girl named Kelly and um, she passed away after a six month battle her parents decided that they didn't want her death to be in vain. So they sat down with the, neuro, the, the neurosurgeon who was treating her and they ended up putting together, saying that they really felt that, you know, nobody should feel alone dur during this journey with, uh, you know, a child or an adult who has a brain tumor. And they put together an amazing resource manual that has been adapted and upgraded over the course of the last 40 years, and it's grown. So we actually have three brain tumor manuals. We have a pediatric brain tumor manual, one for malignant and one non-malignant, and we also have caregiver manuals, which are really good for the parents as well. Um, all of these are provided free of charge to anyone in Canada who would like one. We can give out electronic versions, but I often suggest that it's a good idea to order a hard copy ver a hard copy because you can take it with you to the hospital. You can write notes in it. Um, I have a sheet that um, will be given at the end, and we have a link for these handbooks. 
Uh, they are also bilingual. So if anyone you know is French, we have them in French as well. We also have electronic versions. So you can actually order and send yourself um, one hardcover and an electronic version. And I should mention that all of our resources and all of our services are free of charge. So um, I don't really particularly love statistics. Basically, brain tumors are very complex, um, very much affect the whole body. Uh, it's you know a multifaceted disease. And with so many brain tumors, 120 different types, it's difficult to be able to feel sometimes like you can connect with someone. And so we have a, you know, a lot of resources where you can actually speak with others who are in similar situations. Uh, one of our missions is we actually created the Brain Tumor Registry because we wanna learn more about different types of brain tumors and how there's ways that we can hopefully treat or cure. So we've started this and we work with all the hospitals and they, they share that information. <clears throat> so the programs and services, our most frequently used program, uh, services are our Facebook support groups, as well as our virtual support groups. So once a month, we provide virtual support groups for caregivers and virtual support group for patients. For children, obviously, uh, the virtual support groups and the Facebook support groups are not for them, it is for the parents. Um, but you can all often meet with, you know, other people who are caregiving and going through other situations. So they're once a month, you have the link, all you need to do is sign up, you know, a day in advance if you want to, and it all connects you through Zoom. If you don't have a computer or if you're not comfortable, you don't have something that you're comfortable being on video with, you can always dial in. Um, so it's a really great uh, support group. And because we have Eastern and Western times, you can kind of join, you know, you can join whichever one you think is most convenient. We also have Facebook support groups, and those are really good because there's always somebody up at some hour. So chances are somebody might comment to a question you post. We have the caregiver support group, but we also have the pediatric support group. So if you're looking to join, I often suggest that if you are caring for a child with a brain tumor, that you should join both because the pediatric support group, um, parents post a little bit, but with the caregiver support groups, there's a little bit more traction in that group. We also just recently created a young adult support group. So that would be for young adults who were diagnosed with a brain tumor as a young adult. Um, obviously, if somebody was diagnosed as a child and they're still dealing with a brain tumor or any of the effects, they are more than welcome to join that young adult support group. But um, it is a little bit different because young adults who are diagnosed as young adults face different challenges than those who were diagnosed as a child and have grown up with, um, you know, already dealing with everything that goes along with a brain tumor. So it's a private support group. I run them. So all you would need to do is connect and then you're added and everything you post in there is private. So you don't have to worry about anybody seeing what you're saying if they're not in that group. <clears throat> So one of the programs I run is the Brainwave program, and those are pediatric fun programs for the children, but it also gives the parents a chance to connect. So while your kids are having a good time, the parents are able to talk as well and get to know each other. Unfortunately, with COVID, uh, we have gone virtual because the, the concern is that we wanna make sure that our families are 100% comfortable before we go back to in-person. So we pivoted and we ended up providing virtual support programs uh, that were fun for the kids. So over the last two years, we've had programs like a Build-A-Bear online where we send all the little bears and stuffing and then uh, they all log into Zoom and I run the program and they all build a bear. We had a magic show, which was really fabulous where it was a virtual magic show, but magicians actually engaged uh, the children through the screen. So that was really great. We've done virtual painting programs. I did Halloween bingo. Um, so we do that about three times a year. Right now, our location is Ontario for pediatric programs, um, British Columbia, and Alberta. Because we're virtual now, we do have other families from other provinces that can join. As the need grows, if it does, then we will look to have other in-person programs in different provinces. Um, 
As of now, though, as I mentioned, we are still virtual. I am actually just in the process right now of creating a survey to send out to our pediatric community to see how they feel about going back to in-person. Until then, we continue with um, virtual. We tried something different because we were told everybody is being zoomed, uh, a little zoomed out. And so uh, we purchased movie passes, family movie passes of four to Simplex Odeon. Or I think so, I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head, I apologize. But, um, and so we set family packs and we asked our family since we couldn't be with them, if they can take pictures and share them with us. So at least we feel connected. And again, it's something to do as a family. It takes them away from the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, the day-to-day -day issues that come up when you're living with a brain tumor. So uh, the next program we are going to have, which is not a program, we actually do holiday baskets. Um, <clears throat> you can always, again, there's one link, but you can sign up for Brainwave. Once you do that, then your name comes to me, and then I reach out to you when there's another program, so you won't miss out. We also have on top of the brain tumor manuals, we have a book for younger children called A Friend and Hope. Uh, again, it's free of charge. We have it virtual, but we also have it hard copy. And um, it's really good if you have younger children to kind of explain what's going on. So you're more than welcome to order that as well, free of charge. Uh, everybody I'm assuming can still hear me clearly. I'm not speaking too fast. All is good. All good. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> we have a new program. It's fabulous. And uh, yes, we are tooting our own horn. It is called Super Kids. It was created, um, I believe, a year and a half ago during COVID by um, my colleague Janik and a huge, amazing group of volunteers. And what it is, is it's a program that we have implemented in the school systems. So basically what it is, is to teach brain health to students, to teachers. It teaches them about community service. It teaches them about how to be kind and understanding with another child who's living with something. Um, we've had some parents who have sent it to their teachers because their children are living with a brain tumor. And so they've sent it to their teachers and then their teachers will look at it and they can actually download programs. So we have lesson plans that are created. So when you sign up for Super Kids program, or if you share this with your students' teachers, we have programs that have been created by teachers, nurses, um, community members that have worked within the system before. And there's lesson plans starting in kindergarten, going all the way up to college, age appropriate. And you can download the lesson plan. It gives you a list of all of the supplies that you need and what you're teaching. So it's really a beautiful program. Again, it's meant for the schools. But it's really actually um, families have taken advantage of looking at some of those programs as well. For example, um, we have one for like kindergarten and grade one students, which is like make your own papier mache brain. So they get a balloon, they make, you know, they cover the balloon, it looks like a brain, and then they have to color in the different parts and they learn about the brain and what each part of the brain does. Again, it's age appropriate. Some are, you know, you have to act out a scene about empathy. It's, it's, there's so many programs. So I would advise that you take a look at that. And again, you have the link for it. We also have a really wonderful uh, project called the Sibling Support Project. Um, every year we end up working in collaboration with some nursing schools and they, they ask uh, Brain Tumor Foundation you know, what we feel might be needed, to, you know, to add to our program. And so we explained that we thought that the siblings of children who have been diagnosed with brain tumors oftentimes feel left out or sad or jealous. And so what they did is they created a virtual interactive story, talks about what happened when your sibling actually develops a brain tumor and it talks about the side effects and they might be sleepy and maybe you can't play with them way, the way you want to, but you can sit and watch a movie together. So it's more interactive and it's also age appropriate. It's more for younger children, uh, but it's a really beautiful book. And again, uh, sorry, a, a really beautiful virtual uh, project and you can click in and see that as well. It'll be in the, uh, the sheet that you get at the end. Um, 
We also have webinars throughout the year. These are the next ones that are upcoming. I tend to try to do, if I can, one or two pediatric webinars a year. Not to say that our other webinars do not uh, cater to you know, pediatrics or to caregivers, but I plan one a year at least that focuses specifically on pediatrics. We do have some amazing ones for caregivers as well. So I would suggest that you can check those out. I sent uh, a link to our YouTube where we record and keep all of our webinars. Um, and so we have you know, things like anticipatory grief. We have a webinar talking about you know, what CBD is and the benefits because that's a big question that we have. We have personal stories of hope from patients and caregivers. So if you want, feel free to take a look around. What I did is I listed the next ones that are upcoming and the one specifically that uh, you might be interested in joining is the one in September. Um, it's September 20th and it is, we have uh, two wonderful social workers who work with uh, Sick Kids uh, Hospital in Toronto and they're dealing with the mental health of children diagnosed with a brain tumor, but it's a two part. You don't have to join two, but the first one is, uh, I guess I could say next month as of tomorrow. Uh, the first one is in September and then the next one is in December. Um, so we suggest you sign up, then you get the Zoom link. The other great thing about it is if for some reason you can't make the webinar, once you've signed up, you'll automatically receive a version of the uh, recording so you won't miss out. Uh, but again, if you look at, you know, there's different uh, topics. So in October, we have, you know, tumor treating fields. And in November, we have inherit, you know, inherited factors that, that predispose to brain cancer. Again, take a look. These are the last ones of the year, the December part two one I haven't put up here because it didn't fit on my spreadsheet. <laughs> um, but we always, we have ongoing webinar series. So they start up again in September, they go all the way until June, then we take a break July and August, and then we're back in September. Um, so yes, our website is really good for information sheets. We're constantly updating them, things like, you know, questions to ask the healthcare team, or what can your pharmacy do for you, or, you know, how a caregiver can take care of themselves, because as I'm sure that many people know or have heard, that when you know when you're a caregiver, the last person you take care of is yourself, and so it's really important that we have resources for caregivers as well, because you know it's obviously important to put your own oxygen mask on first, as hard as that is. So we have a multitude of information sheets. Sometimes our website can be a little bit overwhelming, so if it is, my contact information is at the end of this PowerPoint. You can always just send me an email. Instead of searching, I will gladly send you whatever it is you need. My pleasure. <clears throat> uh, funding and research, just quickly. We have a multitude of projects that we offer throughout the year. We have education awards. So children who, for example, have been diagnosed with brain tumors, and then they go on to a post-secondary education, they have the opportunity to receive grants. Uh, so we always have those posted up on our website. We have research grants that go to different medical institutions, research facilities. So that is part of our mandate to make sure that we're able to provide research grants to, you know, whoever to, you know, whoever I guess is the best applicant. That's not my job, so I don't really do it. But um, we always have interesting opportunities. Um, these are just some of them, just to give you an idea. They're a little bit, uh, some of them are, have expired and we have new ones, but again, we have, you know, for fellowships and studentships and research grants. And it's just nice to know that a child who has been diagnosed with a brain tumor, if they are continuing their education, that we do have opportunities for them. And again, you know, these are just some of the grants that we have provided some go to neurologists, some go to nurses, some go, we really provide to all spectrums of, uh, of this community. Again, these are just older statistics that you don't really need to read that I just like to put up there because we like to make sure that 
everybody sees where all of our grants are going. Um, so we do have really good sponsors. And um, if you can see here, Power of Hope is matching our donations up to $100,000. So that's really fabulous. This is a new initiative this year. And we've been quite lucky during COVID to have a really good support system. On top of our virtual support groups, as well as our Facebook support groups, we just launched uh, a new app. It is sort of an abridged version of our whole website, but it's at your hands and it's growing slowly. So you can connect with others as well. What's great about this is we've broken out this app into smaller sections. So whereas on Facebook, if you were diagnosed with a brain tumor, be it benign or non-benign, sorry, benign or malignant, everybody's together in the support groups here. We've branched out. So we have like a non-malignant non support group and we have a malignant support group and a young adult support group. So we're just trying to make that a little bit easier for people to connect with who they want to connect with. Um, so in a nutshell, that is, um, that is, our organization. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Um, and I'm going to just stop sharing now because as I continue talking, I'm going to open up my website page just to show you the Super Kids program. While I'm doing that, if anybody has any questions, did I speak too fast? Not fast enough. <laughs> well, you were a great, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll just show you because it's hard to sort of imagine what um, our program looks like in the virtual um, sibling support project. So if you give me one moment. Um, so our website is there's a lot in it, but you definitely can just navigate by the little search bar at the top. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Can everybody see Super Kids? Yep. Okay, so if you're looking for it, all you have to do is just go up to the search bar here. So if, for example, you're curious, you click into lesson plans, so we have, if you can see here, right, we have a multitude of ages, so kindergarten to grade 12. And if you want to take a look, so for example, this is the storybook. So say you wanted to order the storybook for your, you know, your students or your child, it gives you an idea. So there's different programs here. This is a friend in hope. So it's about language memory reading. Um, so here we have, you know, creative writing, auto brain biography, uh, auto brain graphy, <laughs> chain of empathy, discuss the difference between empathy and kindness. So it gives us, here's the papier-mâché brains that I was telling you about. So it gives you, if, for example, this is just our cheat sheet, but if you were to click into here, right, then it would open up your page of lesson plans. And through your lesson plans, you would be able to see exactly what you need and how you can teach that program. So um, that's the Super Kids program. And it really is, you know, it's free educational programming. You know, we have it also for fundraising to teach a child that they're never too young to give back. So that's our Super Kids program. And I just wanted to show you our sibling project because it's really quite a beautiful project that was made by, spell it wrong. here we go. Okay, so this is on our website. And basically what you do is you click in to read Gabriel's story. So it says here, right, my sister and I, so you click the button to begin. This is Gabriel, he's eight years old. He loves to ride his bicycle and draw cartoons and play with his sister. So then you scroll to continue. Now meet Alex, she's Gabriel's sister. They talk about what she loves. 
then it becomes a little bit more interactive, right? So he plays in the playground, they go swinging, he's not feeling good. One day he's not feeling good, he's not sure why. And then here it gives little side, of, side effects, maybe she's not feeling, he has a bad headache, he wants to vomit. So it's really quite user friendly. And then they talk about it here. Do you want to talk about it? Is everything okay? It really speaks in a child's language. So they explain what a brain tumor is. And now it becomes a little bit more active. So the difference between Gabriel's brain and Alex's brain. So it shows in child's terms what a brain tumor looks like. Again, they talk about how maybe she's gonna lose her hair and what can he do to help her feel better. So it's really just, you know, a, an interactive story about what, what she's feeling and what the brother can do. See, oh, he's scared. So you talk about fear or jealousy. So that, I just wanted to show you a little bit about what it looks like. It's just, it's really one of my favorite tools. Um, I just really like how easy it is. Talks about her new, you know, I made a new friend today. Our old brother has a brain tumor like Alex. I can't wait to see her next time. It's just showing that, you know, the child isn't forgotten. So I just wanted to show you that. And again, it's all on our website. When you go over here, if you would like to sign up for the Brainwave program, you go to the main page, you go to care and support, and you go down to pediatric and family support. Once you go down here, this is where you can order some of the books. It gives you all of the links, but again, you'll get those. And then if you click into our new membership form, which we are working on, by the way, right now it's a bit uh, lengthy because you have to print it. If you don't want to do that, call me up. I will take everything down for you. I'll enter you in our system and I will send you things. We are going to be making this virtual so you can type it in, but this is what you would want to fill out and send back to me. And that way you're on our list. And I will not spam you. I promise the only things I send are upcoming programs or Sometimes I send out a questionnaire to see if there's any ideas the community has because we're creating pro programs for you and your children. So that is our Brainwave program. And then here's our sibling support project. So that is for most of you where you would go. And the other link that would be really good is the caregiver corner. It's really great and it has information. Here's our caregiver handbook that you can order as well as um, so we have, we do have some caregiver events, but everything right now is virtual. Um, but here is, so if you look here, it's, you know, your own caregiver rights, questions to ask your health team. We're just trying to make things easier for you. So that's sort of just easy links. Um, and, and if you have any questions, I am absolutely available. I work every day. And so uh, you can always either send me, drop me an email or you can uh, give me a shout if uh, you wanna speak in person instead of you know, going by email. And with anything else, part of my, part of my um, what I'm able to do as well, sometimes we have parents or caregivers who will call and say, you know, I'm trying to find a second opinion. Have you heard of any other hospital? So, Again, you, I can provide all of the resources so you don't have to do all of that searching, then all you have to do is make those calls. So my goal again is to be able to provide whatever I can to make whatever it is you're looking for easier to get. That's wonderful, thank you, Karen. You're welcome. So many great resources down there. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and we're, you know, we're constantly growing and developing I know that we have a podcast that we're starting to discuss now. You know, we really, we are, you know, we're looking to grow with the times and, and constantly have current and new information and easy ways to make it accessible. Sounds great. Um, does anybody have any questions for Karen about their services? 
for families, for children, for caregivers. Not yeah. Yeah, okay. You <laughs> covered everything, right? Um, yeah. I think when you, I like, when you love what you do, when you love what you do, it's easy to talk about it. You know, yeah. I've, I've been working in the health field for quite some time. And so I think when you love what you do and you work with an organization that, you know, their goal is just to be able to make the lives easier of anyone touched, it's, it's easy to share what we have. Definitely. And I really like your, back to, you know, your, your school resources which I'll be sharing um, next week. I always put out or OPEC does, you know, a, a back to school resources page and stuff. And I'll definitely include those on there. Uh, I just figured and, I'll interrupt with my little kitty who's 10 weeks. Oh. <laughs> he was crying. Oh. Yeah. I have a <laughs> yeah, cat. so you can absolutely share those. Yes, definitely. I'll share that. I love the uh, the super kids. You know, there's lesson plans on there for teachers uh, to help understand, uh, to help kids understand, you know, what yeah. maybe their classmates are going through and so on. And um, and the sibling support is always so important, right? Because it, it, it really is. And again, you know, once we're able to go back in person, um, you know, it's so much easier to connect and Ontario really is our largest community. I hope you don't mind that he's here. He's, oh. <laughs> he's, he's fresh. Crazy. He's only, a, he's only with us a week. Um, so, you know, once we go back to in person, it makes such a difference because we're actually, we're actually able to connect, you know, it's like in-person connection and that's the one thing that I'm hearing that we're all lacking. My kitty's adorable. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's, uh, you know, that's what we're lacking, that, that in-person touch. And hopefully we get back to it. Um, and that's the goal because we miss it. But until then, we really are looking to at least be able to... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, am I boring you? <laughs> Um, I, you know, we really want to be able to at least provide some fun for the children, even if they are at home. That's why sometimes things like sending things out in the mail and letting them do it on their own is just a nice change. And again, you know, if I send something out to a child, I'm sending out to their sibling as well, because they can do it together. So that's also something we do. We make sure that we include the siblings. If we have a paint night, um, I'll often ask, you know, do you want to include the siblings? So I'll even put that in my notes so that the next time we do something, I'll already know the child's age and, you know, they can participate as well. And I like that you have so many free, you know, everything's free and that uh, even the, the booklets, the resources. Yeah. And it's, I think, more fun for a kid to get something in the mail and, you know, exactly. book a hard copy they can write on it rather than just reading it on a screen. That's oftentimes more fun. And it, it's so true. Like, you know, when we saw the kids all making their stuffed animals, you know, then we made sure that we, we had little birth certificates. So, you know, I had them send me the names and then we mailed the birth certificate. So it was like something else in the mail yeah, to look, look forward to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Any questions? Just giving one more chance for questions for Karen. All right. So your website is braintumor.ca. Correct. You, they can go to anybody can go to to um, find more information. Yeah. And um, of course, check that out. I'll be sharing this recorded uh, presentation on OPAC social media pages. Uh, either tomorrow or Friday. And uh, so everybody who didn't, uh, who couldn't access it live uh, can still benefit from it. And no just a little plug for OPAC as well. If you um, want to check out our website, opacopacc.org. We have with our parent liaisons, weekly virtual drop-in support groups for child cancer families in general just to talk to our parent liaisons about any topic really, either medical, non-medical, you know, we don't give medical advice, but just any concerns that, that you may have or just Absolutely. advice for parenting in general or resources, anything. Uh, they're there. Well, and I've shared, I've shared uh, your, your website with my team as well. Because Thank you. We, yeah, I have. 
You know, we have right now where myself and two others plus my director and we're looking to hire somebody else. So we do have, we're pretty well covered. So I have shared that information. Um, and you and I, I think we can talk again after because maybe there's a way that, you know, if we can do, you know, we can help you or. Yeah, we'll sure. We that. are always happy to share your um, free resources with our families that are relevant, you know, to child cancer, uh, brain tumor parents mm -hmm. and uh, share any resources, any information you have. And, and what I can do as well, like, I don't know if you send out uh, emails, but, you know, if we have a webinar that is, I think, relevant, I can send yes. it to you. Yes, please do. Like the one on September 20th, mental health, supporting mm -hmm. the mental health of children with a brain tumor. That is a really important topic. I know mental health is a huge, um, huge. concern and, you know, for any family. Yeah, so. And so different for pediatric than it is for young adults and that it is for um, adults. It's just a whole different topic. Mm -hmm. Very right? important. Because and yeah, we do have an e-blast that we send out every couple of weeks and we have a, a partner section, you know, for other organizations news. So right. put that on there. Just Fabulous. So yeah. anyway, if nobody has any more questions. I absolutely will, Susan. He's quite lovely, David Brownstone. <laughs> and um, he's the one who is giving Thank you. the talk. Um, and yeah. I will pass along the message. He's lovely. He is. Haven't seen him in a long time because we haven't been in the hospital either, but well, that's not he's a tremendous terrible. advocate for the kids. He really is. I'm really excited that they're going to be speaking together. So Great. And again, this is, um, this is the first of two. So if you can't make the second one, you can sign it, you know, sign up for it and you'll automatically receive the recorded copy of it a week or two later. Um, yeah. Karen, thank you so much. My absolute for, pleasure. About all the resources and everything. Great, and you'll share the, the one pager, that way we have all the links. Yeah, I'll email everybody the one pager that Sharon, um, sorry, that Karen sent to me um, with all the links tomorrow to everybody who's here who registered and I'll link to it as well on, online. Perfect, so. and feel free to share my contact phone number and email, there's the toll free number there. Perfect. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks again to Karen. Have a Thank good night. You. Bye. Bye.